Welcome back to Bible Stories, where we dive deep into the powerful lessons of the Bible that still speak to us today. In this video, we're uncovering one of the most profound and sobering stories in Scripture, the last days of King Solomon's life. Solomon was known as the wisest man who ever lived, blessed by God with incredible wisdom, unimaginable wealth, and immense power. But how did a king so favored by God end up in despair, regret, and spiritual ruin? What can we learn from his rise, his fall, and the ultimate consequences of turning away from God? This story isn't just about Solomon. It's about each one of us who has ever faced temptation, struggled with pride, or been drawn in by the allure of worldly desires. Today, we'll explore how Solomon's life can serve as a warning and a lesson for all of us. Whether you're new to studying the Bible or have been following God for years, there are valuable insights here that can change your life. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more incredible biblical stories that reveal timeless truths. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you find it inspiring and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. What part of Solomon's journey speaks to you the most? Leave a comment below. Also, we encourage you to share this video with your church group, family and friends. Let's spread the wisdom and lessons from Solomon's life far and wide. King Solomon, celebrated as the wisest man to ever live, was blessed by God with unparalleled wisdom, vast riches, and immense power. But what truly became of this great king? How did someone so favored by God end his life in despair, regret, and spiritual ruin? Join us as we uncover the untold story of Solomon's final day, a day marked by reflections on his achievements, failures, and the tragic consequences of turning away from God. Discover how a king who had everything came to conclude that all is meaningless and what his story means for us today. Stay with us to witness the powerful lessons from Solomon's life that can still transform our own. What can we learn from his mistakes? How can we avoid the pitfalls that led him astray? This story is not just about a king. It resonates with anyone who has ever struggled with pride, temptation, and the allure of worldly desires. If you find this story insightful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Your support helps us bring more impactful biblical stories and life-changing lessons directly to you. We'd also love to hear your thoughts. What struck you most about Solomon's journey? Share your reflections in the comments below. And don't forget to share this video with your friends and family, because these timeless lessons are meant to be shared. Now let's dive into the last chapter of King Solomon's life and uncover the truth behind his rise, fall, and the heartbreaking end of Israel's wisest king. Don't miss this powerful story that might just change how you view your own life. Solomon's reign began with incredible promise. He was the son of David and Bathsheba, chosen by God to rule Israel after David's time. From the very start, his journey was marked by divine favor and guidance. In 1 Kings 3.5, we read that the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at Gibeon, offering him anything he desired. Instead of asking for wealth, long life, or the defeat of his enemies, Solomon humbly requested an understanding heart to govern God's people and discern between good and evil. 1 Kings 3.9 God was pleased with Solomon's request. In 1 Kings 3, 10, 14, he not only granted Solomon unmatched wisdom, but also promised him riches, honor, and a long life as long as Solomon remained faithful to God's commands. Solomon's wisdom was quickly tested when two women came to him, both claiming to be the mother of the same child. 
Solomon's discerning judgment, which involved proposing to divide the living child in two, revealed the true mother who was willing to give up her claim to save her child. The people marveled at his wisdom, realizing that God's wisdom was with him. Solomon's fame spread rapidly. According to 1 Kings 4, 29-30, God gave Solomon immense wisdom and understanding, unmatched by anyone in the East or Egypt. He authored 3,000 proverbs and over 1,000 songs, 1 Kings 4.32, touching on themes of life, nature, leadership, and faith. His reputation even reached the Queen of Sheba, who traveled from afar to test Solomon with difficult questions. In 1 Kings 10-6-7, she marveled, saying that not even half of his wisdom and wealth had been told to her before. One of Solomon's greatest accomplishments was the building of the temple in Jerusalem, a dream his father, David, had hoped to fulfill. This magnificent structure detailed in 1 Kings the 6 was built with the finest materials and took seven years to complete. It became the spiritual center of Israel, where God's presence dwelled among his people, 1 Kings 8, 10, 11. Upon the temple's completion, Solomon led Israel in a heartfelt prayer of dedication, recognizing God's greatness and asking Him to hear the prayers of His people. 1 Kings 8, 53 In verse 23, he prays, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. Under Solomon's reign, Israel reached unparalleled heights of wealth, power, and influence. His kingdom became a beacon of prosperity, attracting traders, scholars, and rulers from all corners of the ancient world. According to 1 Kings 10.23-24, Solomon's wisdom and wealth exceeded that of any other king. The kings of the entire world sought an audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom that God had instilled in him. Solomon's wealth was immense, and he controlled vital trade routes linking Egypt and Mesopotamia, bringing in valuable goods such as gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks from distant lands. 1 Kings 10.22 his fleet of ships returned every three years, laden with treasures, highlighting his far-reaching influence. In 1 Kings 10.14, we learn that Solomon's yearly income from gold alone amounted to 6666 talents, which is more than 25 tons. Solomon's throne was unlike any other, as described in 1 Kings 10.18.20. It was crafted from ivory and overlaid with pure gold, with six steps flanked by twelve lions, one on each side of every step. This throne symbolized his unmatched power, and no other kingdom had anything comparable. The opulence extended beyond his throne to his entire household. In Vert Kings 10.21, it is noted that all of King Solomon's goblets were made of gold and all the household items in the palace of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Silver was considered so common in Solomon's time that it was deemed of little worth, illustrating the immense wealth and luxury of his reign. However, with such wealth came temptation. Solomon's power and influence led him to form alliances with neighboring nations, often sealed through marriage. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 11 to 1 to 2 that Solomon loved many foreign women, Moabites, Ammonites, Sidonians, and Hittites nations. The Lord had specifically warned Israel not to intermarry with, for these women would lead their hearts astray. Despite this warning, Solomon took it lightly and married 700 wives, along with 300 concubines. 1 Kings 11.3 These marriages were not merely political alliances. They were a direct violation of God's command in Deuteronomy 17.17, 17, where it was instructed that a king should not take many wives, lest his heart be led astray. 
As Solomon grew older, the influence of his foreign wives became evident. First Kings 11.4 tells us that his heart was no longer fully devoted to the Lord as his father David's had been. His wives turned him toward other gods, and despite all the wisdom God had given him, Solomon allowed his love for these women to overshadow his loyalty to the God of Israel. This disobedience led to the construction of high places altars on elevated grounds for the worship of foreign gods, such as Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, 1 Kings 11.5, associated with fertility and sensuality, directly opposing the holiness of God. Additionally, Solomon built high places for Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Molech, the god of the Ammonites, whose worship practices included child sacrifice, a detestable act in the eyes of the Lord, 1 Kings 11, 7-8. These actions were not merely acts of cultural inclusion, but were blatant violations of God's commands. In Deuteronomy 12, 2-3, God had specifically instructed the Israelites to destroy all high places dedicated to other gods, not build new ones. Solomon's actions represented direct disobedience to God's clear instructions. The tragic irony in Solomon's story is that the very wisdom he had requested from God to discern between good and evil was overshadowed by his moral compromises. He became ensnared in idolatry, something God had long warned Israel against, dating back to the time of Moses. In Deuteronomy 7.3.4, God commanded the Israelites not to intermarry with other nations, warning that such unions would lead them away from God to serve foreign gods. Despite these warnings, Solomon's heart was divided, contrasting sharply with his father David, who, despite his failings, remained devoted to the Lord. God's displeasure with Solomon was evident, the Lord had appeared to Solomon twice, once in Gibeon and later in Jerusalem, reaffirming his covenant and warning Solomon to remain faithful. In verse Kings 967, God had clearly stated that if Solomon or his descendants turned away from him and did not follow his ways, there would be serious consequences. Follow the commands and decrees I have given you, and if you turn to serve other gods and worship them, I will remove Israel from the land I have provided for them. Despite these clear warnings, Solomon's heart became stubborn, and he continued to construct shrines and engage in idol worship. In verse Kings 11, 9-10, we read how God reacted. The Lord grew angry with Solomon because his heart had drifted away from the God of Israel, even though God had appeared to him twice and specifically commanded him not to worship other gods. Yet Solomon failed to obey God's command. Solomon's tragic departure from his faith serves as a powerful warning. The man blessed with wisdom, riches, and divine favor let his heart be drawn away by the temptation of foreign gods and the influence of those around him. He exchanged his loyalty to God for the approval of his wives and their idols. The God who had showered Solomon with blessings now declared a harsh judgment. In verse Kings 11:11, 11, the Lord proclaimed, since this is your attitude, and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. This prophecy marked the beginning of the end for the once unified kingdom of Israel. The realm Solomon had built with God's favor was now on a path toward division, conflict, and unrest. God's judgment was swift, though tempered with mercy. For the sake of David, Solomon's father, the kingdom would not be taken from Solomon during his lifetime. Instead, the full consequence would befall his son Rehoboam. 1 Kings 11, 12, 13. Though Solomon had been chosen by God, his heart had wandered too far. 
This is powerfully symbolized in 1 Kings 11.29.31, where the prophet Ahijah met Jeroboam, one of Solomon's officials, outside Jerusalem. Ahijah tore his new cloak into twelve pieces and handed ten to Jeroboam, saying, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I am going to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hand and give you ten tribes. On the final day of Solomon's life, the once wise and wealthy king sat in his palace, reflecting on the glory that had once defined his reign. His life had been marked by extraordinary achievements, wisdom that astonished nations, wealth beyond comprehension, and a kingdom that reached its pinnacle under his rule. But his last moments were not filled with the joy of these successes. Instead, they were overwhelmed by a deep sense of loss, disobedience, and regret. Solomon's reflections are poignantly captured in the book of Ecclesiastes, a work believed to be written during his later years. In Ecclesiastes 1-2, Solomon laments, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. These words echo the profound emptiness he felt as he looked back on a life that had veered away from its original purpose. Despite his immense wisdom, Solomon had lost touch with the God who had given him everything. Sitting in his palace, Solomon's thoughts drifted back to earlier days. He recalled the moment he dedicated the grand temple he had built to honor the Lord. 1 Kings 8 he had fervently prayed for God's presence to fill the temple, and God's glory had descended like a cloud, showing his approval. But now, Solomon's heart was far from those days of devotion. In Ecclesiastes 2.10.11, Solomon reflects on the futility of his pursuits. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, Everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. Solomon's vast wealth had allowed him to indulge in every desire he built grand palaces, planted vineyards, gathered treasures, and imported exotic animals. He was surrounded by servants and musicians, yet in his old age these accomplishments felt empty. He had chased after everything the world could offer, but lost his connection to God in the process. As Solomon neared the end of his life, he came to a sobering realization. All his achievements were worthless without God. In Ecclesiastes 5.1, he reflects on the emptiness of pursuing wealth. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. Solomon had tragically learned that his desires had pulled him away from the path of God. In his early years, Solomon had a close connection with the Lord. He built the temple as a symbol of God's presence among his people. But over time, his numerous marriages, political alliances, and compromises with idolatry distanced him from the Lord. He had abandoned his first love, the God of his youth, who had appeared to him in dreams and granted him incredible wisdom. Solomon's writings offer a glimpse into the mind of a man who had seen the highs and lows of life. In Proverbs 3, 5-6, he once advised, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Yet, despite his own counsel, Solomon failed to live by these words. He pursued earthly pleasures and leaned on his own understanding, straying from the path God had set for him. At the end of his life, Solomon offered one final piece of advice. 
In Ecclesiastes 12.13, he writes, Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. These words capture the heart of Solomon's ultimate realization, that obedience to God is the only true source of fulfillment. Solomon's last day was a somber reminder of the fleeting nature of worldly pursuits. Though he had been granted immense wisdom, wealth, and power, he squandered these gifts by turning away from God. As he faced his final moments, he understood that all his accomplishments were meaningless without a heart devoted to the Lord. In Ecclesiastes 7.29, Solomon speaks a profound truth. This only have I found. God created mankind upright, but they have gone in search of many schemes. The wisest man of his time had fallen victim to his own misguided ambitions, and his reflections serve as a caution to those who seek satisfaction in the things of this world rather than in God. Solomon's story is a powerful lesson on the importance of staying faithful to God. His last days were not filled with celebration, but with deep reflection on what he had lost. Though he began with so much promise, his final years were clouded by regret. The wisest king to ever live had learned the hard way that no amount of wealth, wisdom, or pleasure could replace a heart fully committed to God. Let us take to heart Solomon's final message. Our true purpose is not found in earthly gain, but in reverence for God and obedience to His commandments. Solomon's legacy reminds us that the greatest treasures in life are not what we build for ourselves, but in our relationship with our Creator. His final day was not marked by triumph, but by the sorrow of a life that had drifted away from God. May we learn from his mistakes. It's not how we start, but how we finish that truly matters. Let us all strive to remain faithful to God until the very end. As we've seen, the story of King Solomon is a reminder that even the wisest and most blessed among us can fall if we stray from God's path. Solomon's life began with divine favor and endless potential, but his heart was eventually led astray by the temptations of wealth, power, and idolatry. In his final days, he recognized that all his achievements were meaningless without a true relationship with God. His story teaches us that the only lasting fulfillment comes from a heart fully devoted to the Lord. Let Solomon's life be a warning and a lesson for us. It's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. No matter where you are on your journey, it's never too late to return to God and stay faithful to His commandments. The wisdom we need isn't found in the things of this world, but in seeking God with all our heart, mind, and soul. Thank you for watching this video on Bible Stories. If this message has impacted you, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more biblical insights and powerful stories. Be sure to like this video and leave a comment. We love hearing from our community. And finally, don't forget to share this with your church group, family, and friends. Together, let's continue learning and growing in our faith. Stay blessed, and we'll see you in the next video.